Hi, welcome back to Spring CS170. I wanted to go over a couple of things. Uh, hopefully that will help you for your extra credit as well as like get things down for your exam preparation. Okay, so I think uh, some people were asking me, though last week we actually covered it also uh, in terms of like putting in stuff into your text box uh, and then having something displayed uh, in the text box also. Uh, but I'm going to also uh, give you some more examples today uh, on this lecture. Uh, so see if you can follow along with this. Okay, so you can see here, uh, I set up the gas station HTML. Uh, from the last lecture, you know, we set this part up here already, right? And I asked you to, to do that. Uh, I just kind of left this here. This is from the original sample, okay? That's not anything. In fact, maybe I'll just take it out right now. Uh, just to get it out. <laughs> so, so you'll see here, this is not exactly how you would do it, uh, but it's pretty close. Okay, so it's just a very quick thing. It's similar to the example that we showed last week uh, where you type in your name and then the, the read-only text box had hello in it and you add it to that. Um, except in this case, I just set it to be blank. Okay, and then here's the read-only part right after that. Okay, so here, same thing, right? You have to input, this is your text box. Uh, just to demonstrate some style, so we put in like your font size here. Uh, it's text, and then we named it text box gallons. Okay, and then we set it to be blank, value is blank. Uh, and then we set the size of the field to be 20. Okay, so you remember this, this is important from last week, the on change event. Okay, and then you see the double quotes here. This is for your uh, JavaScript. Okay, so all this part out here, your text box and stuff like that, that is uh, HTML. And then here is your text box. Okay, uh, so hopefully people are clear on that distinction, right? HTML right here. I mean, you can see stuff like this, right? Style and, and whatnot, right? <clears throat> For your text box. Once you start from the on change and the double quote, number one, like we said last week, uh, this is event driven programming. So on change from that text box, it will fire off this code. This code is JavaScript. Okay. And so within that, we have a text box total value, right? You can see where text box total is. This is text box total, and the name of the uh, essentially the variable or the place that you want to put stuff in is your value, right? So that's why we call it text box total dot value. Okay, notice the dot, right? That's important. So dot value. Okay, and then uh, here is I punch in something, right? You can see on the left part of the screen where I put in forty five, right? So text box dot value right which is fine right so that's basically the value that you put into that box uh, that you define here called text box gallons right now one thing that uh, is notable that you should remember is you remember when you set up the text box you could put it with anything you want it could be string or whatever but in the case of this we're trying to do a calculation we're trying to do a number calculation so this is why it's important to set it to be a number and that's what I'm doing here right? you see number open paren and then close paren the nice thing is when you're in this space here you can see how both sides of the parentheses open it uh, are, are in red so you can see that so that in case you forget to put in a parentheses or something like that now the other thing is I put in a dot and you remember from the last lecture I mentioned the function to fixed Right? Again, this is related to numbers calculation, right? So you can see what I did here. If for the sake of argument I put in like 45 point blah blah blah, some numbers after that, I actually wanted to convert it to be two decimal place. Right? Now in reality I may or may not want that, but I'm just doing this to kind of demonstrate uh, how to work with this. So number one, you set this whole thing to be a number. You know, number two, you put in this two fixed function and have it go out two decimal places, right? And then I do a multiply by 10, okay? And then 
all that will get assigned to textbox.value, and then it will appear down here. Okay, so let's see what happens here. Um, so I'm doing it like this. Uh, I know I've been trying to tell you to do on js.do, uh, but with this mixture of the HTML and JavaScript, it might be better for you to just make your edits here and then have it pop up here. Okay, um, you know. If you're just doing purely JavaScript and playing around with functions and stuff like that, then I'd say you can just use the js.do. Uh, but with this, uh, let's just do it like this. So every time I save here, right, then I just refresh here. You can see I took out like uh, this code that was up here to show like uh, New Jersey and whatnot. Now look what I do here. Let's say I do like 30.454. Okay, and so what did what did we do here? Okay, uh, well we did uh, multiply by ten, right? You can see it went from uh, thirty uh, point four five four to three hundred four point five. Okay, um, and you can see basically this four kind of dropped off, right? Actually, I maybe should do some display in between, but really you can see. 30.45 and then because we took it to two decimal place it was just like 30.45 and then when I multiply it by 10 that's how come you end up with 304.5 okay so this is something that you can take a look at when you're starting to write together the extra credit code um, on how to input into a text box and how to set the value in your output text box this is your input this is your output Okay, and we're going to cover another example of this as we go into the lecture today. So I'm going to move on from here. Okay, so I'm here at the simple function, and we go back to the lecture here. Okay, so this sample, uh, I'm playing around with the file here already. You can see sample one HTML. Um, Chapter 9, Sample 1, HTML. Okay, so I am going to place this into my folder, uh, but I really suggest you don't be lazy about it and just use my HTML file. Uh, I really would encourage you to set up your own HTML file, uh, even if it is just to type the stuff in and see how things like your code complete works, what happens if you have a typo. Uh, and I think it just helps you to understand these functions a bit better, or the coding a bit better. Uh, but it's your choice. I'm putting the HTML. I will put the HTML up there after I'm done with all the lectures for this week, and you can take a look at it. But you know, really, from a studying perspective, from an understanding perspective, I do. It's not that much HTML uh, or JavaScript. I I hope you can punch this in yourself and follow along with me while I'm doing this lecture. Uh, so that you can uh, learn this better, okay? But that's my suggestion. So anyway, uh, first things first. Um, again, you know, it's just arbitrary. You know, midnight blue or whatever. But basically, this whole thing is just trying to demonstrate uh, doing some styling in the head, right? So here's the head up here. Here's some styling, just like we did the coffee or the gas. Uh, I should say the gas station thing, right? So the gas station, we set the color bisque up top here similar type of thing right up top here you see like midnight blue we picked a font family uh, some coloring uh, text alignment whatnot right here's the button here's the input right so all of these things once you define it up here then you can just use it anywhere in the body and it'll have that styling automatically applied okay so that's the whole point of putting styling up at the top like this at the head okay so and remember don't forget there's the CSS file uh, that you can include also. I think you saw that in a prior assignment where we included the CSS file. Uh, it's a similar type of concept, but except it scales more because now you can have like multiple HTML files um, that you can source from that CSS file. So you don't have to type all this stuff in over and over again. Okay. Likewise, at the lowest level where you can do stuff in line down here in the body, you don't want to be doing that all over the place, right? That's why you kind of do this stuff up here at the top if you can, uh, either typing it here in the head or doing it with a CSS file, okay? So anyway, I'm digressing here. Uh, so here's the head, 
which is fine, right? I think people, most people understand this. Okay, so here we are. We're creating a function. Okay, uh, what I did in my example was to do both the function plus also passing in the uh, the arguments into the parameters, right? Because that's what we've been discussing since the last lecture. Okay, so here they they kind of started off. They already like put in these numbers here uh, so that they didn't have to put in uh, like an argument or a parameter here. Okay. Uh, but you'll see in mine, I actually set it up here, and you can see like simple num here. Uh, that's my argument that I define, and you can see the function here. I declared the function here. Okay. Now remember what I said yes, uh, with the last lecture, right? You can see I defined it within the script. That means I'm telling it I'm doing JavaScript here, right? By putting this script here, I could have just as easily put this up into the head over here right so you can see a lot of times what people will do is they'll do like the script with all of their functions like right up here okay so people kind of know where to look for all the different functions uh, they'll see it up top here but it works over here too you can put it here in the body okay so that's where it is right now but you can see input num right so I define input num and it's right here right so var ants1 plus input num times 2 right and then here you remember this from like what we just did with the gas uh, gallons thing right um, we call the button calc uh, I'm in the JavaScript here right notice the on click and then you have the var num right and I say the number that we're gonna pass in is the text box one dot value okay so I didn't really name it to anything special right it's just text box one so then here look semicolon and then here you can see simple num I'm calling the function up here right and then you can see we called it calculate right uh, and then within here we just say well the text box one text box one dot value equals to the answer because I have access, so I'm in here, I have access to whatever on the HTML, so in this case uh, it's text box 1, I can see this. This is essentially, uh, from the view of the JavaScript function, it's essentially like a global variable that it can access to. Okay, so that's why you can do text box 1 dot value equals to, to ANS, which is this ANS times that. All right, so how, what does that look like in action? Uh, where am I at? Over here. Right, so if I punch in, uh, let's say I punch in five, I get eleven. Right, so what happened here? I put in five. I passed in five into the simple num. Right, five comes into here, and then you get one plus five times two. Right, and with the order of precedence, you have five times two equals to ten, plus one equals to eleven. Right, and then 11 came down to here, and then text box one dot value got assigned to be 11. What I just did here in terms of inputting into a text box with a number, tracing it through the function, you're likely to have that in the exam. You're going to have to trace like the variable, the number, all the way through the process, uh, and tell me what the value is going to be. Okay, this is what you're going to do on the exam. Okay, so this is an example of how we declare the function how we called the function, how we passed in the argument, and how we took it in as a parameter here, how we returned it back out. Um, well, we didn't actually return it back out. We actually set the variable right out here. This is not really the ideal way to do it, but this is one way to do it. Okay. Now, the other thing to remember here is that um, this is probably not the most robust code, right? Um, you know, you could say, hey, you know, the input has to be a number. So you can do like a check here. Is it a number? If I put in like uh, like ABC, right, obviously this is not going to work. This is going to break, right? You're going to get an error from this, right? So this is very simplistic code just to show you how function work. Um, I'm not really sure within this class we really emphasize too much about checking for errors and stuff like that. But if you're really doing this, um, like say you have your own web page or whatever you're doing, uh, it is good to have uh, a little bit of error checking uh, and helping uh, your user to be able to put in the right data. Okay, 
but you know this is just a simple example of showing you how functions work. So that's just an aside there. Okay, so let's come back to here, and I'll walk through the slides, but I basically just talked to you all the way through it here. Okay, so here we have the create function, right, and then here's the call function. Right, so you can kind of see what it's doing here, which is I, what I just talked you through here. Right, and then here's the bit about passing in the argument, right, and, and this is the parameter, right. So here's the function declaration, simple, and then here's the data that you pass in, and you can see here's the calculation here, right, and then it returns it back out. And then here, this is where I called it, right. So note this, right, on click, double quotes, everything in there is JavaScript. Right, var num, simple num, right? Okay, now this is the part where this is, you can see down here it says this is a better solution, right? So, why is this a better solution? Um, when you set something here within the function, uh, assuming that you know, quote unquote, the global variable and you're setting that value there, that's bad, that's bad practice, right? You really don't want to do it that way, right? So, the way like I have this here, so what does that mean? Well, what happens if I want to do another simple num in another part of my page, right? And it has a different text box. Well, then I'm kind of not in a good situation because I've already quote unquote hard coded this to only come back to this one call here. So I've kind of messed this up in terms of making it sort of general that people can call it from anywhere. So this is a better way to do it. You can see here, I do a return ANS. So what that means is that once I return it, that means a whole bunch of people uh, from all different parts of the uh, page can call this and they'll just get the answer back here. And then they can stick it into a text box, they can put it into an alert box or whatever, right? Uh, it doesn't matter, right? So it makes it more general. And that means it's more shareable by other parts of the code. So that's why this is a better practice to put in this return and put the ANS uh, and return it back out, okay, when you call this function, right? Um, and so you can see what happens is, well, okay, once I return it, what, is, what does that mean, right? So here's that function call again, simple num, and then you can see var answer equals to this, right? And then you did textbox1.value equals to answer. So while I'm here, why don't, I, why don't I make that change here, okay? So where are we at here? So we're at the var num, and we call it the simple num. So now we're going to do this. We're going to do var, and then we're going to say answer equals to that. Okay? And then let me just return this so it looks like that. And then I'm going to say text box. Oops. Text. Box one, I hit return here and it just auto completes it for me, right? And then I put in dot and I hit return, that's value, right? So I did that slow so you can see that it's like this whole what they call code completion uh, type of thing, right? And then I have to say equals to answer, like so, okay? So I typed it a little bit slow so you can see how this code completion stuff pops up. So I think that's pretty helpful. So that actually uh, makes it a lot easier for you to type stuff in. So I suggest whatever editor you're using. If you're using Atom, I'm using Notepad++, uh, Visual Studio, whatever. Uh, they should all have something like this and it makes things a lot easier. Uh, and likewise, they have like the different color coding here. That helps you to, I showed you before, like the open paren, close paren. Um, you know, double quotes, all that kind of stuff. That's what these editors are good for. They'll, they'll help you kind of like find your errors a little bit easier. Okay, so here I set the answer equals to the simple num uh, and then you have the text box value equals to the answer. Um, now what do I have to do up here in the function call? I just have to take this out. So I have to say Instead of setting the value within the function, I'm just going to return it. Uh, return, oops. Return, uh, answer. So let's see what happens when I do that. So I'm going to refresh it here. And 
and I get 5, right? So 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. All right, so hopefully everyone saw that. Uh, and I'm going to stop here, uh, and then we'll pick up some more example in another lecture. All right, thank you.